Hi, this is Allie from the Terra team. In this video, I'll show you how to do an interactive analysis in Terra using a Jupyter Notebook. A Jupyter Notebook is an application that runs in a browser on a virtual computer in the cloud. It includes active code, data, and documentation, and it lets you and your collaborators explore, analyze, and visualize in real time. I'm going to demo in a featured workspace for a study about heart disease called 2019 Reproducible GWAS, which you can find in the Showcases section of the library. The notebook I'll show helps to visualize some clinical data like cholesterol and glucose levels. It's the first part of the study. Remember, you'll have to make your own copy of the featured workspace with your own billing project in order to run the notebook. In your copy of the workspace, you can read the dashboard for an overview of the analysis. Then you'll find the notebook by clicking on the Notebooks tab at the top of any page. To open and run a notebook, you click on the name. Tara will open a preview, which you can browse to understand the analysis. You'll need to select one of two options for running the code, Edit or Playground. Edit mode lets you save changes to the notebook. Playground mode lets you run the analysis but not save any changes. Running in Playground mode keeps collaborators working in the same notebook at the same time from overwriting each other. I'm going to select Edit mode so later I can show how to save this notebook. The first time you open a notebook in Terra, you'll need to configure the virtual machine to run the application using this form. Look in the Workspace dashboard or the beginning of the notebook for recommendations on what configuration to use. You'll choose the virtual environment, the libraries and packages you need, in the top section. Terra's default environment includes select versions of GATK, Python, and R. There are several pre-configured environments in the drop-down menu too, including popular packages like Bioconductor or Hale, and some project-specific environments. The Custom Environment option lets you specify a custom Docker image with your packages and libraries already installed, which is useful for reproducibility. Like any computer, the virtual computer running this notebook can have different levels of processing power, which you'll choose in the Compute Power section of the form. There are three pre-configured levels in this second drop-down menu. And if you need more power, you can select Custom, which is what's recommended for the GWAS analysis in this workspace. The custom option lets you choose the CPUs, memory, and disk size of your primary machine here. It also gives you the option of choosing a parallel processing Spark cluster by selecting Configure as a Spark cluster. When you do that, you'll be able to select the number of working machines and their CPUs, memory, and disk sizes. This option will cost more per hour, but can be useful for long computations and big data sets. You'll want to know how much you'll pay per hour to run your notebook with the power options you've chosen. You can find that at the bottom of the form. Oh, and you can also specify a startup script here, which lets you control the environment by installing exactly the libraries and packages you need. This is really useful for making your analysis reproducible but it's not intuitive to find this option here in the Compute Power section. Once you've chosen your environment and your Compute Power, click the Create button to spin up your virtual machine or cluster. The first time you run a notebook in a workspace, you'll be waiting a few minutes at this point, while Terra creates the virtual application from scratch. The next time you launch any application in the same workspace, it should only take a few seconds to start running again. You'll know when your notebook application is running from the widget at the top right corner. This also shows how much your virtual application costs per hour. You pay the runtime costs as long as your virtual machine is running, but if your browser or your notebook is idle for more than 20 minutes, Terra will pause the application so you're not paying for resources you're not using. On a side note, more compute power costs more, so you'll want to be careful when you choose your compute power. As a general guide, you want enough power to do the job without too much power that you won't need. Refer to the recommendations for guidance. And remember, you can change the configuration at any time by clicking the gear icon at the top right. 
Just keep in mind, this will recreate the virtual computer from scratch, which can take several minutes and may result in losing some variables or generated data. While your runtime is spinning up, you can skim the preview to get an idea of what's in the analysis. Now that my notebook's running, let's dive in. Notebooks are made up of two kinds of cells, documentation and code. I'll cover documentation cells first. Good documentation is really useful for collaborating. It also helps to remember exactly how you did an analysis you haven't looked at in several months. To edit, double-click inside the cell. Documentation uses the markdown language, which looks like this in edit mode. When you've made some edits, press the Run button on the top menu to update. A shortcut I often use is to press Return and Shift at the same time to run a cell. Of course, you can't have an analysis without code. You can run any Python or R analysis in a notebook in Terra. It's a good idea to check to make sure your notebook is running the right programming language, called the kernel, by checking at the top. My notebook is in Python, so I want the Python 3 kernel, which I see is what is running. Terra should figure this out automatically. But if you need to change the kernel, go to the top menu bar and select the right one from the drop down menu. And if your notebook seems to be hung up or running slow, you can restart the kernel with the same menu. To edit commands in a code cell, just click in the cell and start typing. Then to run the code, click on the cell to select it and hit the run arrow in the top menu. You'll know your code is running by the asterisks and brackets at the top left of the cell. And when it's done, you'll see a number, which is the number of commands that have been run in this session. You can also use the drop down cell menu to run all the cells above or below where you are. As the code runs, it's highlighted in red in the table of contents. If you need to add a cell, you can use the insert from the top menu. And then use this drop down menu to choose the cell type code or markdown. Here's an example of the sort of plotting you can do interactively in a notebook. This is a plot of the distribution of low density lipid levels in my study participants. One thing I really like about analyzing in a notebook is being able to go back and change the parameters. For example, if I want to see the distribution of fasting glucose levels instead of low density lipids in my participants, I just change the variable in the code cell and rerun it to generate a new plot. Now that you've done your interactive analysis, how do you save the work? In edit mode, Terra automatically saves the notebook file to your workspace bucket. You can see how long it's been since it's auto-saved up at the top. You can also save or download your notebook file in either edit or playground mode by clicking file in the menu bar. It's really important to understand that output data generated in your notebook is stored in the notebook's local storage disk, not in your workspace bucket. It doesn't get auto-saved along with the notebook file. You'll want to save a copy of any output files you care about to the workspace bucket or other permanent storage. Once you're done working, you can close the notebook by clicking on the X at the top right. When you do this, Terra tells Google Cloud to stop the notebook runtime but save its state, including the Jupyter Notebook's virtual computer and any modifications you have made, like installing packages, as well as any files stored on the local storage disk, like output generated. That's your intro to interactive analysis in a notebook on Terra. If you want to learn more, see our online instructions and tutorials at support.terra.bio. Thanks for watching. We hope you'll enjoy using Terra for your analysis in the cloud.